because believers of these days they no longer investigate and that is what we are discussing today how are you doing i hope you are doing good depending on where you're watching this as well you could tell me in the comments from which part of the world are you watching me from today we are discussing about the concept of um investigating and the body of christ and if you have watched me over time if you have been watching my discussions about things that happen in the church note i talk about other things aside religious conversations just that you see more of the religious conversations on your screen so I came across a video where Apostle Aramo Osai was talking about one problem that there is in the body of Christ where we do not get to investigate or get to really do know people, of course, that we quote and unquote follow. And it reminds me of what also Pastor Olumide himself has said in another video that also addressed that particular point where it's a difficulty in the body of Christ. And if you watch me over time, I've always told you that there's a difference between the body of men and the body of Christ, which I think is very important. So in this conversation brings in the person of late prophet TB Joshua. On this platform right here, please, 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 you have to respect my principles right here that whatever you call yourself, prophet, apostle, whatever, whether you are real or fake is not my business. I get to talk about the facts of which I see in the conversation. Okay, because some people are going to be in the comment, oh, TV Joshua was not a prophet, he was a soothsayer, blah, blah, blah. It's okay. Right here, we are having an open-minded discussion as we also get to understand the point. So let's listen to Apostle Aramo Osai discuss about this. And he talks about the person of Archbishop Benson Idahosa in the context. The Bible speaks in the book of Jude about some impostors, some strange people that crept into the body of Christ unawares. By the time you trace their spiritual history, he has a lot of question marks because believers of these days, they no longer investigate. Are you with me? You are not with me. There's a woman, a woman that we used to know as a prophet. I'm talking about not in Nigeria, but in the United States of America prophet in the in the 80s and then somewhere at the end of the 80s 89 88 89 she was exposed for witchcraft and she accepted that it was actually witchcraft she was practicing for all those years she was called a prophet are you are you there a, a real prophet came on board in one of those meetings that she was invited and that real prophet moving in the authority of god brought her to a point where she could not deny that it was witchcraft. She hibernated for a few years and repackaged herself and relaunched herself um, in the early 2000s as a prophet again. And she started the same things she was doing in the 80s. She began to repackage it and to dispense the same thing. Are you there? And she still had following. The reason is because the body of Christ, we do not investigate people we do not investigate people once upon a time someone rose as a prophet in our own nation and we were old enough because we we're old enough to know where the person came from the person used to do um, ritual cleansings at the bar beach in Lagos um, appeasements of tokens with the blood of chickens. All right? That was the person's history. And then suddenly the person started going by the name Prophet. And people were attending such meetings. And they were believing that it was God that was at work. The Bible says these guys, they crept in unawares. What does it mean to creep in unawares? They discovered that the people that were available, that had the capacity to check them, were not concerned about defending the body of Christ. They were not concerned about defending the faith. They were more concerned about the empires that they were building, and they were not bothered about the state of infiltration and the agenda of infiltration that the kingdom of darkness was staging against the body of Christ. So they wait for moments. You know, we had a mighty defender of the faith in the person of Benson and Dahosa. If you wake up as a spiritist and you convert to become a pastor, Benson and Dahosa will visit you in that 
your shrine you call the church. You will have to answer to Benson. So in a day when a man has kingdom authority and his heart is for the body of Christ like Benson Idaosa, people cannot creep in. But when there are no such defenders that are, are on ground, uh, people that are not, uh, and the people that are keeping the fort are not really concerned about infiltrations in the body of Christ, such elements can creep in and uh, masquerade to be one of us. It is because of this possibility that Apostle, that Jude is saying, we will need to take on the responsibility of defending the faith. Archbishop, late Archbishop Benzni Dahosa is held to a very high esteem, especially in the Nigerian Pentecostal system. Now, come on, if you have watched me over time and seen people that I have discussed, in fact, almost all of them hold him, of course, to a high esteem as quote and unquote the father of Nigerian Pentecostalism, or would I say via spiritual great grandfather or grandfather or even father directly, depending on how you get to look at it. And the reason why he's been up in this conversation right now is, of course, someone will start typing in the comment, oh, you are talking about Archbishop Benson Daosa. But, but come on, Apostle Aramo I just mentioned him right now, and in the same process, he was talking about the person of T.B. Joshua. In case you don't know, please watch the videos I have linked in the pinned comments. So I want to ask you a question right now as a believer before we go on to the person of T.B. Joshua. How do you get to test spirits? What are the ways you know to test spirits? Now, what I got to pick out there was that it's not just the responsibility of the pastor or the man of God to be the ones to search out and test spirits and all that. So I was now asking myself a question. When T.B. Joshua was alive, at the time of his relevance, was Benson Idahosa not alive at that time? Then I came across this video of which someone who claimed to have been a witness and present at the time Benson Idahosa was really much alive. What Benzni Dahosa said about the person of T.B. Joshua. This video is everywhere. Just listen to this yourself. There are many God generals in the past who died at young age, who died sick also. But that doesn't mean they were not men of God. The way God wants it, that's the way it went. It's so sad. But glory be to God that is going to be with the Lord. Amen. Um, so what do you think he will be remembered the most for? Hey, we will miss him a lot. Because... He is just the greatest miracle worker we have in our time. And now I'm looking at the shoe. The shoe is too big for anybody to wear. Too big. I can't see anybody wearing it. Honestly, you cannot be, there's no another you. You must be your you. Nobody can do it exactly the way you do it. That's how. I think we remember him for. We also remember him that he is a man that have given so many prophecies that came to pass about Nigeria, about some personality, about other countries, African countries, European countries, and all over the world. We will remember him for that. A man who also, we remember him also as a man that almost all, almost all the church leaders criticize him because they cannot do what he is doing. They don't have the power to do what he is doing. They kept on criticizing him. And even as they criticize him, he continued to grow and grow the more. I remember many years ago, Idaosa, Archbishop Benson Idaosa, of blessed memory, said something about T.B. Joshua. They went to complain to him. T.B. Joshua, we don't know who led him to Christ. We don't know how he came to limelight. Eh? We are suspecting this man. He said, leave him. Leave him. If he is not of God, he will not survive seven years. But if he is of God, he will survive seven years. And if he survives seven years, then know that this man is of God. How many years ago now? You understand? I hope you know I'd be so best in the house. Yes. Ah, of blessed memory. That's what he said. Yes, I was there when he was making that statement in Benin. You understand? I'm a witness to it. So, in fact, we will remember that man for his great exploits. Now, if you listen to the questions the man said that Benson Dahosa was asked or things that were said about T.B. Joshua to Benson Dahosa, and then him giving a public 
a response to that? Would you say that this man who would be a random person that is interviewed on the street would actually be lying or would you say that he's saying the truth? Because if you look at what Apostle Laramu Osai was saying, it, it seemed to be that maybe Archbishop Benson Dahosa didn't really know about the person of uh, T.B. Joshua and as such could not probably, if I'm to put it that way, if I am to put it that way, you know, be able to, you know, challenge him or something like, we get to see happening today in the body of Christ where, of course, pastors publicly even do not really call out another person. I guess someone that really called out T.B. Joshua verbally then was when was Apostle Suleiman with respect to T.B. Joshua's situation with E.R.W.A. and a particular testimony that happened in his church. I don't know if you guys remember. I'm going to respond. I will, I'm not going to respond because of me. I will respond because of two people. Papa Idausa and Pastor Deboye. <laughs> Prophet T.B. Joshua is too small to stand and hear people ridicule at Deboye and, and Papa Idausa and keep quiet. He's too small. <laughs> And my problem is that when I respond, I, I, I don't respond, I respond raw. I don't edit, you are too small. The synagogue is too small to speak against the redeemed, the CGM, too small. I told my, I told my children, my lawyers, I know I said, I'm not, I'm not taking anybody to court. I cannot fight church, cannot fight church. But I must correct an impression. None of my pastors have followed me to my father in the Lord. Me, I book months before I see him. Then I carry a frustrated fat body babu to go and meet who? There is no mountain on Lagos Ibado Express Road. No mountain. You're sick. What I don't understand here is was it a mistake? Somebody stand for one hour, 30 something minutes. Is she a guest speaker? You went to Prophet Jeremiah and worry and ran me down. And Prophet Jeremiah is a wise person. He avoided her. He's a wise man. He spoke to me, said, somebody call Royal Diel. I said, are you serious? What did he say I talk? He said, they say you criticize me. I said, you are doing a work for God. Why will I criticize you? I have not seen anything wrong in what you are doing. You are blessing lives, blessing people in worry. Why would like the one person stands on the altar? Come on now. So if you look at these testimonies, what do you have to say about it? Because I know for a fact that when it comes to the person of Apostle Aramos High, with the way I've seen videos about him, you see many of these videos on YouTube. I don't know why some people like, as if they see me as a problem. You see these videos on social media, some stories here and there, and then he's saying this, or this person is saying that. I bring these videos together and I get to discuss them because I have an opinion. I think if I have to make it public and then talk about what I'm seeing, I think it's something that you can join the conversation or not. So if you look at some videos where he also gets to say that, you know, he's one of his calling is to uproot, have to uproot before you plant or, or when it comes to him dealing with falsehood in the body of Christ, it seems to be that presumably he could also be having that ministry of uh, calling out or would i say dealing with some um, controversial issues that are in the body of christ and like just as someone would say for you to be an apostle it is actually a very controversial calling and why do i seem to find it interesting that many people quote and unquote most especially the ones that are apostles get into controversial conversations both the negative and the positive what do you think about that because even of course the person of apostle paul himself was actually caught up in the controversy with he and Peter, which is in the Bible for you to see and know when they had a bit of a misunderstanding. I don't know if you understand. So when it comes to the body of Christ, I think there is a place for you to know that misunderstandings would happen, disagreements would happen. But what is most important is at the center of these disagreements and confusions here and there, who is at the center? Is it the person that are at the center or Christ is at the center? Because if when he becomes the persons themselves that are at the center, which is what I get to see most times, you see um, children of this papa or this papa fighting and doing this. 
you get to ask yourself then what is the body of Christ turning into? Is it now becoming the body of men? And when I came across this video as well of I have been to hellfire, I have felt the pain, the torture, I don't want to go there and be burnt for everlasting. No, I don't want to go there. I saw the body of TB Joshua in hellfire. If Dausa is tormented in hell today because of ring, because of earring, uh, sorry, Adlan, the member to put on others' adornment because he himself was putting a long chain, he didn't know. But I'm sorry to tell you that Bishop Idausa is in hellfire, he's crying. Idausa went to hellfire, I saw him, he was tormented in hell. I saw Bishop Idausa in hell. And he was putting long chain. He was wedding the church member with ring. He was also putting ring in his hand. Be love, you if you are if you are a pastor, run away from ring. Don't wed your church member with ring because what I'm telling you is the truth and nothing but the truth. Those of you putting perfume, Jesus said you should stop putting perfume on your body. On the last day in Isaiah, Isaiah 3, verse 24, he said, instead of sweet smell, you will be burning and you'll be stinking, you'll be smelling. I think you all have a mental disorder. That woman is really mad. And when I see her, I will slap her. My name is Apostle Dr. Cassie. She needs a slap for a deliverance. That's an insult. You don't talk to the generation of the late Archbishop Benson in the house anyhow. If you want to die, you can die and go to hell. Or you can die and some assault anywhere. Let me tell you, viewers, and the stupid woman who went to hell. I will still go to hell again. I saw the late Archbishop in my revelation in 20, 2001. In 2001, I saw him in my revelation. And it was in heaven I saw him. The angel that was bringing me said, the angel that was bringing me was taking me towards the, the the heaven gate and i saw it i was standing by the flower side and he said this man is from nigeria that was my first encounter with it the <laughs> and i don't want to go deep to it but he gave me a message to go to his bible school which is all nation for christ bible institute and told me I should attend free of charge. And I went there, I told them this is what it also told me. Now for the woman to say she went to her fire and she saw it also and TB Joshua <laughs> in her fire. Please, I'm speaking in the aspect of it also. That woman have a mental problem. She's suffering from mental disorder. Now she claims she's a Christian. Now what on earth did she went to do in her fire first of us? Because only sinners that go to her fire. And there's nobody that goes to her fire and comes back. Never in history. Check record, read your Bible. I want to say to this woman, the Bible said, he that add to the word of God that cause sins shall be added this woman is violating scriptures biblical integrities so i want to tell the viewers all over the world and all of you that believe that story i think you all have a mental disorder this woman popularly known for her revelation saying that hey, Benson Dahosa and tb joshua both of them she found in hell i'm now like okay what do Christians get to make out of this? Because believers of these days, they no longer investigate. <laughs> of course, many people don't investigate. Come on, look at it. On this platform right here, I've exposed the gimmick of Miracle Money, me watching a video and investigating the subject in the video, which most of you would never do. And I get to bring out the fact that this person right here is someone known to this pastor. And then what all of this right here is arranged. Who did the investigation? No one. When the whole... There are many investigations I've done on this platform, trending news about pastors, bringing out the facts to them, and some gimmicks that have been done in the body of Christ, bringing out facts to them. But yes, Theo, me doing the investigations right here, I am the one seen as the, <laughs> the one bringing division in the body of Christ. Because you have been trained over time not to question things. 
you have been trained over time that the words of or whatever papa you follow is superior to whatever so no one questions anything for example in this video right now if i am in any way questioning if i question let's say what aremo osai says or whoever uh idahosa or whatever name you follow or already for the person that sees that person as their papa or whatever sees me as an enemy because i am investigating and breaking down the things that they themselves might have seen already but they didn't even understand what the person was talking about or maybe they understand but in their hypocrisy they just keep quiet and look that's why i would say things like this so the point of this video right now is for you to really understand the conversations of things going on in the body of christ and for you to know that you as a believer watching me if you are a christian watching me you also have a role to play in also searching out the people that you follow or would i say being critical of what it is you accept as a doctrine or what it is that you get to open yourself up to because of course there are many wolves in sheep clothing and it's a fact but if one thing that keeps would always stand is that the goal of maybe my platform when i get to discuss this thing is that i know for a fact that these people whoever i get to discuss or discuss what they have said would always have their established following some people's eyes might be open to the reality of what i'm discussing and they'll be like hmm, let me take a second thought but i believe that over time um if you have been watching me at least for some time you train your mind to be able to question things and investigate things as well because with that, it brings clarity to you as a person and to a great extent as well, makes you better informed because how informed you are defines how transformed you can be.